So I am not a scientist, I am not a doctor, I am simply a guy that barely knows how to use Google, but I did as much research as I possibly could to tell you guys the difference between filtering water and purifying water and how you probably are not purifying your water. Even though you like to think you are, you probably aren't. And so when I started researching this for you guys, I wanted to make sure that I could provide as much information as possible so you guys understood exactly what was happening and exactly what we were trying to accomplish. And so what we are trying to accomplish is we are trying to make water that is safe to drink and not get us sick, okay? That's the main goal of filtering, purifying, boiling, using chemical treatments. The goal is to not get sick, all right? There's a lot of nasty stuff in different water sources that can get you sick, and it's our job to eliminate it some way, somehow, so that we can safely consume it, stay hydrated, stay neutral get the nutrients of that water and keep moving and not get sick okay so what do we look at first thing i looked at is what are some of the things that people are getting from consuming bad water okay and so some of the examples are uh, they call it travelers but it's diarrhea you get from consuming bacteria from other countries and so a lot of people say don't drink the water in mexico but then they go to uh, Asia or Europe or Australia and they end up sick because even though that water is safe to drink for those people it's not safe to drink for us because it's a different bacteria there's different things in that water that our bodies aren't used to consuming United States water okay and so the United States water has bacteria and things in it but we have created immunities when you go to a different country they have different stuff in their water so they can drink it it's fine for them because they have been drinking it their whole lives but for us we might get sick so it's important to know that it's a bacteria that's getting us sick uh giardia and cryptosporidium are common as well those are parasites and so when you're looking at filters that filter out protozoa protozoa is a non-scary word for parasites and so you want to make sure that you're utilizing these illnesses, uh, salmonella is a bacteria, typhoid fever is a bacteria, uh, hepatitis is a virus. And so we want to eliminate those things so that we are not getting sick. And so the most common from my research, again, take it with what you will, is bacteria is what most of the sicknesses are caused from. Next is parasites. And then there's a few things that are viruses. And so those are, seem to be the main things that make people sick. There's also heavy metals, uh, pesticides, uh, heavy metals, pesticides, uh, I got a list here, <clears throat> organic chemicals, pharmaceuticals, herbicides, petroleum-based products. There's a lot of things in the water that are in there, salt. Salt water will dehydrate you faster than not consuming it at all. And so there's these components that will make you sick, they will make you dehydrated, they will do things to you you don't want them to do. But the most common ones seem to be bacteria, viruses, and protozoa. So what are bacteria, viruses, and protozoa? They are living organisms, okay? So they're usually one cell microorganisms. They're living, they're alive. And viruses and bacteria will live on counters, doorknobs, water. They'll, they can live on their own for a couple, some a couple hours, some a couple weeks. Okay? And so these things can just exist. And so those are kind of things that you want to be worried about because they just, they could be anywhere and you can't see them. Protozoa, otherwise known as parasites, need a living host they need a human or an animal in order to live and so these things don't live very long on their own they need to be inside of an animal whether it's a human a deer a coyote a wolf a bear a squirrel a rabbit whatever it is it needs to be inside of that mammal in order to live and thrive and so those are the three basic things and so, again, when it comes to water and treating that water, 
All right, a lot of people say that when they boil their water, they purify it. They're purifying their water by boiling it. No, you're not. What you're doing is you are killing those microorganisms. You're killing the viruses, you're killing the bacteria, you're killing the parasites, and so that they cannot do what they need to do to make you sick, okay? They're just dead. They can't perform what they need to perform to grow or multiply or get you sick, okay? So you're still consuming them. They're still in the water. It's just they're dead, okay? But it's not removing anything. Anything that's in that water is staying inside of that water, all right? And that's where filters come in. Filters physically remove whatever it's filtering out. So in this case, the Sawyer is removing parasites and bacteria. It is not filtering out chemicals or viruses. And so if you're drinking pool water, this thing will make you sick because even though you can drink a little bit of chlorine, a little bit of bleach isn't gonna hurt you, lots of it will, okay? So you cannot use this for pool water. Same with this, you cannot use this with pool water. Boiling it does not remove that chlorine, all right? It's still in there, it's just hot now, okay? You can't kill chlorine, it's a chemical, so boiling it won't treat it, this won't treat it. Again, this will kill viruses so they can't hurt you. This is not removing the viruses, so the viruses are still gonna be in your water. This is only removing parasites and bacteria. It's important that you realize that. Uh, according to my research, most of the things that make you sick are a bacteria, some are parasites, and then there's a couple viruses. And so for me, I choose this system knowing that I could get hepatitis, but I'm not really scared of getting hepatitis in the water around me. I haven't heard of anybody ever getting hepatitis from where I've been camping or what the water source that I've been drinking of. And so this is enough for me, but it's because I understand what I'm eliminating. I personally have gotten cryptosporidium, which is a parasite. And so I actually got it from my son. He gave it to me, but it's not fun. It's not very pleasant. But now I understand that that is a, re that is a disease or an illness that I need to treat. Okay, I, it's a concern of mine because I understand that it's in this area, I can, can get it, so I need to use this 100% of the time to get rid of parasites so that I don't get cryptosporidium again, all right? The other filter that people like, I think this is a Berkey filter, the new hot topic is the uh, Grail, I think before that the hot topic was the Purdy with the filter that filters out everything this thing does. But this right here, go back to my list, the Berkey removes bacteria, protozoa, pathogenic bacteria, heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, organic chemicals, pharmaceuticals, petroleum-based products, uh, unpleasant taste or odor, silt, sediment, and viruses. So this thing is eliminating a lot of stuff. It's trapping it inside of that filter and so that you're not consuming it. It's actually removing it from the water. And so a lot of people call this purifying the water, which I don't know, or to some people, when you're listening, it's important to understand who is talking and what they mean, all right? Some people, I see a lot of backpackers and hikers, when they say purified water, they mean that it no longer has viruses, bacteria, or protozoa, which are the three main things that make you sick. If it removes those three things, it's purified, okay? There are other people that say when it's purified water, they're talking about this, which is removing all of that stuff. It's removing those three things plus a whole bunch of other stuff that can make you sick over time. And so it's important to understand the differences here. It's important to ask the question, what exactly do you mean? What exactly is being removed? What exactly is happening? Uh, is the three main things being eliminated or are a lot of things being eliminated? When it comes to pure water, like pure, pure water, the only way I know how to get pure water is to distill it. And so when you're distilling water, you're bringing water to a boil, you're collecting the steam or the water vapors, you're cooling them down and then collecting it, 
capturing it as water again. And that water that you capture from that steam is 100% pure. There is nothing in it. 100% of that, well, whatever was in that water stays in the pot. It does not collect into the steam. And so it's removing the salt. So if there's all ocean water, it's removing the salt. It's removing 100% of all the bad things that will make you sick or dehydrated. It's removing 100% of them. The problem is, is it's also removing 100% of all the good stuff inside that water. And so the electrolytes and the natural salts and the minerals and nutrients that are inside that water, you are not replenishing. And so why would you need to replenish them? Because you are losing them through sweat and urination. So the more you sweat, the more you urinate, the more you need to replace those natural nutrients and the distilled water doesn't have it in them, okay? And so what happens is, is you drink the distilled water and that hydrates you, but you're not replenishing that nutrients. And so you're just, you're getting slower and slower and it's getting harder and harder to do things. And it's because you're not replenishing what your body needs. And so it's important to understand what you're doing and it's important to understand what you're trying to accomplish. If you are surrounded, if you're in a deserted island and you're surrounded by ocean water, there's no fresh water, distilling is your only option, okay? So you're gonna have to distill that water to rehydrate, but you're gonna have to figure out a way to get electrolytes or whatever. So if you're gonna pack like trail mix, trail mix with salty nuts to replenish some of that salt, if you're gonna carry some drink mixes or something to replenish the electrolytes and all the other nutrients that you're not getting from that water, it's a good option. But again, if it's all you have, you need to understand that you're not safe drinking that water. You still need to replenish those nutrition nutrients. When you boil water, there's still salt and bleach and heavy metals, lead, mercury, all that stuff is still in the water. You are not removing it. You're simply just killing the living organisms. When you're filtering water, you're simply taking out certain things, not everything. There is no one filter that will remove salt and everything. Iodine tablets are another, or chemical treating your water is another really good option. The iodine will kill bacteria and viruses, but not parasites. So for me, uh, Giardia and Cryptosporidium are parasites. And Cryptosporidium, I know, is in the area. I've gotten it. And so this is not a good option for me, okay? Because it's not going to eliminate the one thing that I'm probably the most worried about getting again. And so this is something I don't use. The other thing that's very important is you need to understand your water treatment, what exact, you need to understand how to use it and what it's treating. Okay, so this right here will treat one liter of water, but you takes two tablets, all right? So there are other chemical treatments that take one, tablet you can use so many drops of bleach per gallon of water and so you need to understand how to use it and what it's doing okay this is even if i use two tablets and do it exactly according to the instructions i could still get cryptosporidium so i don't use these this right here will filter out a million gallons of water a million gallons but it's only removing parasites and bacteria hepatitis and other viruses are going to find their way through and make me sick. But like I said, I'm worried about the bacteria. I'm worried about the protozoa and this eliminates those. And I haven't had any cases of hepatitis or any other viruses from people drinking the water in the state that I live in. So I'm pretty confident this will keep me safe. This on the other hand, this will eliminate a lot of stuff. This is something that a lot of people go after. But the problem with this, okay, so I told you this will filter a million gallons. This will only filter about 27, okay? So this will filter out 160 refills. So you fill this up 160 times, you use that filter, it's going to eliminate a lot of stuff. It's gonna make your water safe to drink. But after that 160 time, it's either going to clog and you're not gonna be able to get any water through it or it's not gonna properly filter that water and all that nasty stuff isn't gonna get filtered and you're gonna consume it. And so it's important to make sure that you understand 
the limitations of your filter, not only what it is and is not filtering, but also how often you can use it, how much you can use it, how much time you have to wait. Boiling water, you have to bring it to a rolling boil, which takes time and fuel and resources. This, you have to wait 30 minutes before you can consume the water. You need to understand exactly what you're getting yourself into. And I know I'm trying to, I'm repeating myself, but it's important. Okay, you need to know what you are getting out of your water, what you are leaving in your water, how to use the system you choose, and how much water you can get from it. Okay, the boiling method, you can get an infinite amount of water uh, as long as you have a way of getting it up to boil, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. As long as you have a fuel source, you can have as much water as you will ever need. Okay, there is no limit. As long as the pot holds water, you'll have water with no viruses, no bacteria, no protozoa. This two tablets per liter, a million gallons, a hundred thousand gallons, 27 gallons. Uh, the grail, I have that written down too. The grail will filter out 65 gallons. Uh, there's a light one that filters 40 gallons and then there's the big expensive one, the $90 one that filters out 65 gallons. So 65 is a lot more than the 27. And that's why I think it's so popular. I think this one filters out uh, 60 gallons. And that's why it was popular before the grail. And so it's important that you understand what you're getting yourself into. I see a lot of people, they are praising me. They're like, oh, I'm so happy to see you purifying your water before you drink it when I'm filtering it through a Sawyer. I'm not purifying it. There could still be viruses in that water. There could still be heavy metals, chemicals, things in that water. I'm just, the odds of me encountering those things are really low. Or they talk about boiling their water and purifying it that way. And you're literally not removing anything from your water by boiling it. You're simply just killing the living organisms that can make you sick. And so do your research, do your homework, figure out what is in your area, figure out what you are trying to accomplish. Are you trying to eliminate bacteria, protozoa, viruses, chemicals, heavy metals? Uh, there's a lot of lakes that have uh, high levels of mercury, and so you might need a filter to filter that out. Uh, do some research from the water sources that are surrounding you, and then make sure that your option, your treatment option, caters to all of those things, okay? So with that being said, leave any knowledge or questions in that comment section. I want to know what treatment center you use and if it does exactly what you need it to do. What are you most scared of? I personally am scared of cryptosporidium because I have gotten it and it was a horrible experience. And I don't want to do it again. Uh, what are you scared of? Leave it in the comment section and I cannot wait to see you on my next video.